um, in this afternoon we're going to, uh, well, this is a pretty light session. It's not, uh, we're going to uh, play around a bit with the new interface um, that, we, that we're developing at the same time as working on that uh, uh, new ingestion uh, system. <coughs> we, uh, we put um, a version of the, of the new interface with a, a preloaded database and data uh, separate on the, on the server. So uh, you cannot crack it. Well, you can probably break it if you want. You can try. Um, but that's the purpose of today. And um, we know it's not finished. It's a beta version. So um, before you start, it's a beta version. So not, not all functions are, um, are available yet. But I will demo it first. And then afterwards, I will ask you to, uh, to play around yourself for half an hour, 45 minutes. And then afterwards, after that, I will ask you to fill out a little feedback form. Because what we want to do um, and this is the starting point of a uh, continuous feedback. Um, with your feedback, we will uh, create a new release of the software. We'll send it around again to you for feedback, and then slowly we will try to uh, uh, to move to the final version that has to be released in um, in January. And especially for Yalta, I think we will well finish in, on time before four o'clock this afternoon. So. But only if you fill out your questionnaire after this, of course. Um, OK, so a new, a new user interface. Um, as Dick presented already this morning, um, there's a lot of work on the, on the, on the back end of the system. But we thought it was also time to, um, to work on a new user interface. Although the old one was kept up to date, we ran into some issues. Um, we got quite some, some user feedback over, over, the, over the last years, and we've been Trying to collect that and then come up with a with a uh, a new version of the of the interface, and we well to to summarize it needed to be faster uh, because especially if you do a free search on the current one you will see that it takes a quite a long time before the system responds um, and especially the map also when it builds up it doesn't show anything it, it it's it's well it's not optimized anymore. And of course, you well, you will understand that since since we started the interface with a couple of hundred thousand, and we ended up at two point one million. Yeah, at a certain point, your the way you set it up, it just doesn't work anymore. Uh, we wanted to make it easier for the user to get to data, to make an order, so more intuitive, a uh, little bit more catchy in the design with a large large map, and so uh, well to make it nice to work with. Um, in general, we want to add more added value for users. So um, allow users to, uh, to save their query, uh, to get easier to their, um, uh, let's say, their logbook of, uh, of orders, um, that type of, of actions. And if you have more suggestions when playing with this, please put them in the form later. And also important, we are working in Cdata Cloud also in, in, the other, in one of the other work packages in the virtual research environment, where you can <coughs> then work with um, uh, WebODV, uh, Diva, uh, visualization tools. And we want to make a connection between the two services so that you're able to uh, search and download, or no, sorry, search and collect data, but not download it to your own server, but move it into the VRE and continue work <laughs> to work there. So that if you have 100,000 ODV files, you can just move it into your space in the VRE. And there, for example, start with uh, the aggregating function in the uh, from WebODV, um, make some, uh, some quality analysis and then export it to a NetCDF file and that NetCDF file you visualize in some tool, tools that you have there. That's the, that's the final goal with this. So that was, um, well, these were the aims, the main aims of uh, what we wanted to develop. Um, I will now switch to a little demo and um, I will take you by the hand first and then show what, what is possible now. I will also point out where we are. We have not arrived yet, so that you already know, OK, that's not, implement, not implemented. There are a few open ends. But in general, you, you, you are already able to search, browse, download <coughs> data. Um, big difference is immediately when you, when you start the interface is that um, 
you will get a login screen. Uh, you can you have three decisions. One is uh, you can uh, click the red button and do not you can you do not log in and you just uh, uh, continue anonymously. You can register a new account, so a new Marine ID, and you can of course we want to point to to uh, promote the green button. Yes, log in and you get additional personalized services and it makes it also a lot easier. If you log in from the start with your Marine ID, you um, have a much smoother experience later. You don't have to log in once you arrive at a certain uh, uh, action for ordering data, for example. And this is also to overcome one of the main, uh, well, I've received that quite a lot, uh, co comments of the, of the old interface that users were, of course, it was very free. You could browse and uh, do a lot and create an order but then all the way at the end, you were asked to, to log in. And then people said, yeah, but I don't have a Marine ID. And then you first had to go into the Marine ID uh, registration process. So let's, um, let's go in. Ah, it even remembered me. That's, uh, it stores a cookie. So normally you, <laughs> you first get a Marine ID screen um, to, to log in, and then it comes back. So what you see here, I don't get the, if I log in, I don't get immediately a search screen, but I get the, what we call the MyC data net. And this can be expanded over time. Um, over here, I have a screen for the order, uh, my current orders, so my standing orders, my order history, my saved searches, and I can start to, um, to search. I will go into it later, but you see here, these are the orders that I created previously. If they, um, if I've downloaded them after 30 days, they will move into my uh, order history. I have a list of safe searches. You will see later how uh, how these get there. But let's uh, let's start by uh, by searching. Um, we have um, like the old, the current CDI version has. Um, there's the option to of a, of a lot of search fields. They, they, that is still possible to build a complex query. Um, at the top we have the uh, the most important ones. That's from uh, free, uh, free search, C regions, date search, parameter search, and an uh, and an area. You can, and then we have if you click advanced, we will going to, we're going to animate this one that it will scroll down immediately. You have all the other search fields. But what we know from the current system, from inspecting the logs, is that many users start in the current interface by just typing in a free search term. So if I do that, and I start with nitrate, and here you can see um, the, the response time now of the free search. It's a uh, because this uh, system is now loaded with around 290,000 records. Um, it's um, a collection of the data from SHOM and from, uh, from Ephemer, unrestricted data. And they've been so kind to, uh, to allow that for us to use already in the demonstration phase. So what I have now, I can see here what I searched for at the start, nitrate. And then we've combined this with an additional filtering mechanism. Mechanism. So you could start, if you want to drill down further, you could of course start a new search. And, um, but we allow now the user to make um, um, additional searches just by, by filtering. You can inspect what is actually in the, in the content of this, uh, this 14,000, around 14,000 files that I have. For example, I could say, well, um, Give me all the data in the Indian Ocean. Right. The zoom to selection is not implemented, as you see, because later it will automatically zoom to what is on the screen here. But I can easily remove it just by clicking it, and then it um, the search route is gone. Over here, you can always unfold so fold in and fold out the, the search interface. Let me see if I, of course I can zoom in. 
and then I immediately end up. Oh no, I can, I can. Sorry, I can. Um, <laughs> can uh, X. What is it? Unfold, or fold out the the search page again, the result page. And what I can do, for example, is um, I can draw an area. So I can say, well, I'm mostly interested in this part outside the on the Atlantic Ocean for in front of France. It immediately fills it fills in the coordinates for me. And if I now then press the search, and as I said, unfortunately the search to selection, so the zoom to selection doesn't work yet. But you can see here that I now have nitrate in that area. And I can, if I want, I can drill down further. What I can also do is I can reset everything. And now you can see what's in the current, um, current system. So this is only one eighth of the data that we will have. And you can see how the tiles of the, the interface build up. It's actually uh, for the technical persons here. What we do is we, um, we feed the Elasticsearch into GeoServer and GeoServer then feeds the tiles back. So there's both uh, Elasticsearch for the geographic search and for the uh, ASCII search. I think now, and that's probably because you, you are, some of you are following me and doing the same thing. Um, our geo server is not the <laughs> is a bit blocking sometimes. I can see here that something is not not loading. It has too many requests parallel, but it's part of the deal. This is of course a stress test for the system because normally there will never be 50 persons at the same time at the at this interface. We hope at a certain point it will be, but if you zoom in, then uh, it will follow again. So this is the, the, the total set. And what you can also do, and I don't know if you have used it in the, the current version already, but we have a summary function. And this allows you to inspect what you have in your results list. Um, for example, if I, well, CDI partners, of course, it's only show money from here. You'd have to unfold the originators. You can see in this collection from which orig originators this data is. Um, but I can also see it distributed over the parameter groups, the P02. And if I'm really interested in a certain parameter group, nitrate concentration, for example, I click it and it uses, yeah, there it is. Now it uses the selection that I, that I chose as an input for the, uh, for the facet, so another search facet. And if I wanted to, I could go back again to the uh, to the summary and choose another one. So I can do the same as in my facets, but then via a summary, and I can see what's in the what's in the content. For example, I can uh, see it distributed per year. And what we implemented also, and just uh, just because we could, and it's funny, and it looks nice, we implemented some uh, uh, some graphs. I'm going to expand this a little bit more. But it's, it's a nice way to, uh, if you would have a, a whole collection and you would want to make a report, for example, and grab some screenshots of the content, you can see here how it's distributed over the years. Um, well, we can even add some pie charts, but it's a bit boring, this one. <laughs> but it's a way to, uh, to inspect it. And e even here, I could, again, click on it, and it's another facet. So I can drill down in my search result further and further. So that's, that's one way to search, or a second way actually already. What we can also do is build up a more complex query from the, uh, from the user interface. So instead of doing a free search, I could make use of the beautiful BUC vocabularies. And we, um, I think this is already the third version of this uh, search uh, interface on the, I will zoom in a bit to make it, uh, so. because what we, wanted, what we wanted to do is make optimized use of the vocabularies and the relations between the vocabularies. And in the 
current interface, it's very hard sometimes to find a certain term. It's, it's very hard if you want to be in the list of search in the in the list of P02 terms, for example, for nutrients, because it doesn't start the word doesn't start with nutrients. So if you type in an N, you can you probably don't find it. So we've implemented a just a search field on top. So if I would type in this, well, nutrient is not even in, but nitrate, and it immediately drills down. And if I now am interested in nitrate and nitrite, I select them, and I, now I have these two selected for search. What I can also do is I can make use of the uh, hierarchy in the vocabularies. If I'm looking, for example, for chemical data, and if I just type the, click the term, it automatically drills down in what is what is below. So now I have here everything that fits under nutrients in the vocabulary for P02. And I can immediately do the same thing again. So if I click the, the term itself in the list, it drills down the list. And if I click the little select box, then it's a select selection for, for my search. So now I'm searching for nitrate concentration and nitrite concentration in the collection. And I can search here from 2000 2016 and the same as before I can also indicate uh, an area now hopefully there's something left in my, uh, my search there you have it now I have a, a list of uh, 470 records and you can st see again here that all the parameters are there that I've searched on and I could even use the facets again to drill to drill down further. If I wanted, I've, I've built up. Uh, I can build up very complex queries, and it, it might be very interesting if I come back later in three months and I want to have an update that I am. Um, um, well, I want to rerun it. So we build up something called a safe query. And you can you click the button. You provide a query name. So okay, I can say, for example, nitrate. Uh, 2000 to 2016. I submit it. Query has been saved. And if I now visit my saved searches, and that's what uh, the screen I showed in the, at the start, now this query is, um, is saved for forever under my account. I can remove it if I want. I can rerun it by just clicking the play button, but then I would end up at the same screen again. But what is nice also is I can I can share it. It has a unique URL. So if I grab this URL, and I open a new browser, so you can um, you can send it per email or you can bookmark it, whatever you uh, you want to do with it. Oh, oh sorry. It's a Mac. I use the Control C, but it should be Command Command C Command P. And now I have the same the same query as I had built up before. So I can I can share it. I can save it. I can uh, bookmark it. Whatever you want. If I just rerun it, I have the same thing again. And of course, like in the in the previous uh, interface, you can always see view the details of every record. We haven't changed that much. It's a little bit better map, and but it's the same. Uh, all the metadata of the of the record is still there. Now, okay. Of course, the most important thing why I'm searching is that I want to download the whole thing. So at the moment, we have. Um, Implemented only that you can set the list to 20 or 100 or 1000 records at the, uh, in one go um, We're thinking about implementing a button uh, order the whole set So that you don't have to do anything just the uh, 472 and we probably will do that when the um, Collection of the set is lower for example than X we don't know how high we want to set the barrier we want to prevent that 
if we make it too easy, everybody would just say that 2.1 2 million records order, because then there's a lot of risk. Well, if, if it would all only be unrestricted data, it, it, you, you could almost do it. All, on the other hand, you will get a, a zip file that is so large, people won't know what to do with it. And, on the, and, and there's also a lot of restricted data going to be triggered. So we have to, yeah, we don't want to have users overload the whole, the whole system. So there's a, that, there's a threshold, but we're still uh, thinking what is the best, uh, well, the best threshold. But if I switch now this list to 1000 and I just click here once, then I have uh, 472 uh, records in my basket. It immediately changes here in the top right. So you can see um, it move here. Now if I go to the, to the basket, it's just like uh, shopping. And that's almost the same as you had now. You can preview the whole, whole uh, set. That can also submit it. It knows already because I'm logged in. It knows already who I am, what my roles are. Different is now that you can give your order a name, your own name. So you can say Nitrate 2000, because then you can easily recognize it later. And you can set your preferred format. Um, <coughs> it explicitly tells you preferred, because it can be that the format is not available. Then it will give you the best other option. But if you set it to ODV, it will give you ODV, whatever it, 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 um, the system has it. For Metatlas, it's the same thing. Or see your point. And motivation, yeah, I'm testing now. Then I submit this request. And it's, um, it's done. There's a button here, visit your orders. And you can immediately check. You don't have to wait until you get an email or click on something, but it's much more a closed loop. You can click here and you see immediately the uh, my order. And this is the same as before, it's now in orange, so it's awaiting processing on the on the servers. It depends a bit on the size of your of your order at the moment. If you would make some of a couple of thousands, it takes a couple of minutes. Um, if it's um, up to a couple of hundreds, it's a, it's under one minute. The only thing is our check for processing the order doesn't run every second yet. So it waits, it checks every couple of, well, it takes a couple of minutes to see if it finds an order. So therefore, it now takes, also for this, a couple of minutes before it's ready. But um, we are, well, we're still optimizing that, but it will be uh, faster and faster until we reach the limit of the servers at, uh, at EU. And then we ask for more expanding of the limits, right, Marcia? <laughs> Um, so, now we have to wait a, a little bit. Um, let me see what I can still show you. Oh yeah, the map. So I have a search query. I'm um, going to look for all the data in the Bay of Biscay. You can see it immediately now. If you add it later when it or uh, we'll zoom to selection, it will be even better. But see the results drill down. The map itself, um, you can see that it's quite fast. Um, and we have the option of adding additional layers. For example, the email depotimetry one, which we maybe might, we might make default, but um, it's an example of how you can include external map services. I click get capability, so I get everything, all the layers that it uh, presents, this WMS server. And I can, for example, take the coastlines and uh, this one. And that's the background most, some, yeah, most of you will, will recognize. You can see here that um, the, the order of the, the layers is not, not right. The, the latest ones are put on top. But what I can just do is uh, just drag and drop my selection layer on top. And I can put the coastlines on top. So then it gives a little bit sharper coastline. And then I can zoom in. Of course, this is the beautiful photometric product. product. 
you can see your, your data on top of, uh, in this case, a bathymetry. And um, as you see, the dots get a little bit small here. We're still optimizing what is the best, uh, the best way, because on the screens it's hardly visible anymore, I think. But that's the way you can, uh, you can play around with the, with the map interface. The data must be up here. Yeah. So it's a very fast that you can uh, um, now make collection or search for whole collections of a certain parameter. Um, and later we are thinking of, but we're not sure yet how, to include also P01 uh, so that you are able to search on the P01 term in the data or a collection of P01 terms, uh, but that will be a challenge because it's a big list. So now let's go back under this button where my name is. I can always go back to my CDataNet. Unfortunately, the orders are not there yet, but it should be there any minute. Um, I don't know. for. This is as far as I wanted to go because I uh, would like to give you some, now some time to uh, to play with it yourself. Um, are there any questions? At the moment, you can only work with, um, let's say, collections from the metadata. Um, if you see here on the on the map, there's this identify button, and that should be activated that you can click on a specific point, and then be able to check the details of that record and add that specific record, especially for seismic, um, I mean, for, for large collections of points, it, it's always hard to find exactly that one. But, um, well, if you have a seismic track, for example, you would like to just select that one for, for, for downloading. Yeah, but it's uh, on the list already, but it's still provided in the question there. So. Any other questions? No? Well, I would say um, just uh, play around with it then. Um, if you haven't found it yet, uh, you can go to sdc.maris.nl and there's two buttons. If you take the one on the left, that's the entry point to the user interface. And on the one on the right is the access point to the questionnaire, but we will go over there after you first uh, just play with it and make some orders and um, um, see how it works. So if you go to sdc.maris.nl, you'll find that and you don't have to type in a complex URL. Click on the link on the left. And then you'll find this screen. Let's see if the order is ready by now. Yes. Well, in the meantime, my order was processed. You have to be lucky if you're, if you're in, the, in the window where it now checks. So now I can just click this one, to see what is in the order. Or I can just click here the download button and download the whole set. So you can build up a collection of uh, files you want to order, or a couple of orders, and then uh, download later from your from your order book. So sdc.maris.nl and um, use your Marine ID to log in. We had. Um, Last week we had a little bit of an issue with new users, but um, so if you if you're here and you didn't have a Marine ID yet and you decide to register, um, 
it means that you follow the whole process and then once you come back into the interface you should get a, um, a license screen of the CDataNet because you, you're first a marine ID user and then you have to confirm commit yourself to the CDataNet license. Let me know if you have problems, I just walk around. If you want to have some uh, example, you can try this one.